Okay, um, with the drivetrain complete now, um, let's see if we can walk ourselves through the process of adding another subsystem uh, and another command just for practice. Um, the other thing that we're going to cover in this video is we're also going to cover uh, introduction of uh, adding buttons and kind of how to configure buttons in robot container. So um, we're going to get to all that stuff. So the first thing, um, just like we did with the drivetrain, the first thing that we want to do is we want to add another subsystem. That's where you're always going to want to start. So I'm going to right click here and I'm going to go create new class or command. I'm going to scroll on down and we're going to create a new subsystem and we're going to call this subsystem shooter. Okay, uh, The game this year has a shooter and lots of years we do need to have a shooter. Um, so we're just going to call this one shooter. Uh, once again it extends that subsystem base class um, and then let's just add a few uh, things to this. So first of all, let's add a motor controller just to keep things simple. We'll use the same kind of motor controller as we've been using. We'll just use a good old Spark. Uh, we'll call it Spark uh, Shooter. And we'll declare it there. Let's do our little quick fix here right away and add the import that Spark library right at the top there. Um, let's initialize it here and let's call this shooter we have already equals new spark so we're going to create an instance of that class and you can see it wants a channel that's the pwm channel so we're going to store that again in the constants and i'm just going to call it constants uh, shooter um I could call it shooter pwm or something like that would be appropriate but that's okay like that uh, we want to again quick fix let's add that constants class import constants we don't have a shooter variable here yet so let's go quick fix create constant shooter uh, and let's set that right now because it's set to zero right now we already have one of our motor pwm set to that so let's go into constants uh, maybe you want to keep all your P but PWMs together as well. So I'm just going to move this around a little bit. I'm going to cut it and I'm going to move it right underneath here, this section here. And that's what I'd su suggest you do is you kind of categorize your constants. Uh, axis, for example, could be this bottom point. But uh, I obviously can't have it set to zero, so I want this one set to four. We'll just use the next uh, PWM there. PWMs we're wiring from our previous video. Uh, that looks good. Let's save all, so we're in a good spot. Okay, back to the shooter. So really simple in this shooter class, all we want to do is shoot and stop. So we're going to make this uh, fairly straightforward. Um, so we have our constructor that gets our shooter here. That looks like that's all good. Um, so now what all we want to do here, let's go uh, public void, let's call it uh, shoot ball, let's take in a speed, double speed, and let's go, um, this is how easy it is to set a motor, speed, let's go shooter, dot set and let's just give it that speed variable that we're going to put in there later that's how easy it is to kind of run a motor is give it a speed uh, and let's go here public void stop is the only other function we're going to go for right now and in our stop we're going to do just something we're going to hard code this we're going to go shooter Dot set and we're just going to set it to zero. I don't think that needs to be stored in a constants that we're stopping at zero. Okay, so we only have two methods in our shooter class. Um, so now we need to make a matching shoot ball command. So this is this method's called shoot ball. Uh, so we want to make a command that matches that and controls its life cycle. So that is good. So let's go into commands, right click. And let's go create a new class or command. Uh, command new. And we're going to just use that same name naming convention, shoot ball. So it matches our function that it's going to 
um, control and hit enter. And you can see it extends that base command. We want to make sure that it uh, requires that, um, that shooter subsystem. So let's go shooter. I'm just going to call it shooter shooter. And we're going to go inside here. We're going to, in the constructor, shooter s. And inside here, we're going to say uh, shooter equals s. And then we're going to go add requirements shooter. OK, and then the only thing we probably need to do here is our little quick fix to make sure we have that subsystem included there. And then our constructor and our uh, initialization is kind of taken care of. OK, so uh, now where do we want to operate here? OK, so if I'm doing a shoot ball, I think I want the set to a button while held. OK. If you're going to do a button while held, I'd say your best place to put that is we want that to execute while held. So we're going to put it in our execute. So the function that we want is very simple. Shooter dot shoot ball. And we're going to again give it a constant very, or value. So from our constants. So let's set that constants dot, uh, how will we call this, shooter speed, and we'll get that same, need to import the constants, quick fix, import constants, we don't have this value set yet, quick fix, create constant shooter speed, we want to do that, I'm going to just bump over quickly to the constants and set that to something other than zero. Uh, I'm going to set our shooter speed to 0 0.5. Okay, so when I hold a button, we want to make that run at 50% just when the button's held. Um, so that's good. Um, I think when we're interrupted, we should probably do shooter.stop so that when another subsystem tries to take over our shooter, we want to make sure we stop there so we don't run into some problems. I think that's all there's going to be to that command. So I'm going to go File, I'm going to Save All. So now, if you remember our next step, like it was before in the drivetrain, let's go into that robot container and let's start um, declaring these things. We need to declare our commands and our um, subsystems in there. So looking from our previous kind of model there, uh, let's look what we did. So let's go here. Let's go private, final. This time not drive trim. This time it's shooter. And let's just do the same thing. Shooter, private, final. The name of our command is shoot ball. Shoot ball. So then kind of matches up. Let's do our little quick fix again, add those classes, and add that. Okay, that looks good. Now we've got another error here, so let's program the next thing, just right underneath that driver joystick. So we need to initialize those, so let's go shooter equals new shooter, oh, shooter. And then let's go shoot ball equals new shoot ball, giving it shooter as an argument because it needs something of type shooter in the constructor. Uh, and then we need to do shoot ball uh, dot add requirements shooter. And then that's set up. That's good. Okay, so that should be set now. Um, now, this is where we're first going to configure buttons. So you can see this just as another place to store this button configuration. Configuration. It's still happening inside the constructor. So you could get rid of this method, and then you could do them all in here. But what the advantage of this is, is that it's set up like this so we can separate out where our button's all configured in this one place. And it's a paradigm that has been put forward by first. 
uh, or WPI, and we're going to just stick with that. So uh, inside here, we're going to go joystick button equals, or no, we're going to call it, how will we call it? Shoot button equals new. Uh, let me see if I'm doing a new joystick button. Now, it's gonna, what arguments does this want to take? So this wants to take new joystick button. So it wants a joystick. Well, I think we know what our joystick is, right? Our joystick was called what? Driver joystick. So I think we can figure that piece of the puzzle out. So let's, why don't we call that driver joystick? driver joystick so that's our xbox controller so that error is gone now button number this is kind of a tricky one so um in this case i'm going to take a real quick peek at my other code but i think it has something to do with we're likely going to go to that joystick our driver joystick let's see what we got dot uh i think it's going to be a get rocks but let's just double check what this is I have this in code over here uh, so I can cheat a little bit uh, from memory so let's go into our robot container and what do I have so we have that second argument is in this case oh it's Xbox controller button and we're gonna set it to the right bumper so we're gonna actually do that so I'm gonna go into uh, right here, and I'm going to call that, let's just add in what I have there. So Xbox controller button, K bumper right value. So that's the value of my right bumper on my Xbox controller. Okay, so that gives me that argument. Uh, and then I have my shoot button here. Uh, I think I need one last line of code here. Just trying to remember what that is. Uh, yes, this is where we need to link everything up. Kind of like an event handler and other languages. So I have declared my shoot button and what it is. Now what I want to do is set that shoot button while well held to run my shoot ball command. Okay, so while I hold that button down, it's going to run shoot ball. It's in the execute, if you remember, of my shoot ball. That we're running that method. Okay, and then we're going to stop when that's interrupted. So that looks like that's all we need to configure that button. And then we would add other button configurations as we go and set up our other buttons in a very similar fashion. Um, so that looks good. Let's just go file save. And let's take a look if we can actually run this, this thing in the simulator. Let's just test if we build first. Build robot code. What do we got? Any errors? Nope. Build successful. So let's just try and launch this thing in our simulate robot code. Uh, there we go. Just what I want. Click OK, see that GUI pop up. OK, so now I have that PWM4, which I'm looking at. Let's just move into Teleop. Let's hold down that button. Let's see if we get a value. It should be a value of 0.5. Uh, there we go, value of 0.5, well held. When I release it, it stops. Looks like everything's operating well in the simulator. OK, so that's it to adding a button and adding a second subsystem. Um, next up, we'll probably add something else. Maybe we'll add something that's controlled on another axis. Uh, one that might be handy in this season is maybe a, a climber or could be an intake, might be one to be axis controlled. Um, so we'll maybe explore that in the next one, but let's close this for now and uh, see you in the next video.